uh, coding katas comes from uh, martial arts, um, specifically karate, where a kata is a sequence of moves you practice over and over again to make that make those moves sort of muscle memory and instinct. So in coding, we use a similar style of technique to practice test-driven development over and over again so that when sort of the pressure's on and the chips are down, we don't shortcut ourselves and we stay with good practices. Um, and so the, uh, the kata that I'm gonna do, um, uh, so most of you have seen at least one version of the, the FizzBuzz kata um, that you hear talked about. FizzBuzz is sort of considered kata number one. It's like the first one you ever tried, right? Um, well, a good candidate for kata number two is one of the two versions of converting Arabic numbers to Roman numerals, right? You can either go from numbers to the Roman numerals or Roman numerals to regular numbers. And what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna do numbers to Roman numerals, okay? And so uh, is everybody here familiar with that, with the concept of how Roman numerals work, right? Where one is an I, two is two I's, five is a B, right? So we're gonna do that. Um, and I'm gonna take a slightly um, different tack in how to approach it um, that I came across in a video as I was doing research on this kata that I thought was really cool. Um, and I'm gonna make use of the fact that Ruby lets me define new methods on existing classes. Right, so, so, stay, so, so sort of bear with me. Um, so right here off the top, we've got our empty spec file, and no code, and of course we have zero examples and zero failures, so we're kind of green, but we haven't done anything yet. So um, one interesting thing about Roman numerals, um, is uh, the Romans didn't have a concept for zero. Um, but it turns out that um, zero is still a valid number as far as we're concerned, so we probably want to try and handle it in some way. Um, and so the way I'm going to choose to handle it is I'm going to say that um, if I try to convert a zero, I want my routine to return an empty string. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that looks like this. Now we get our first failure where, right here, uh, two Roman hasn't been defined. Um, but because we tried to like, just sort of say, hey, number, make yourself Roman, um, it's at, the text is actually telling us that what we want to do is, whoops, is type correctly, um, is actually add a method to the built-in fixed number class. Right, so if we add our method, we get our, we get our error message to change. And so we expected to be the empty string, but we got nil. Um, and that's actually good information because it tells us that since we're not doing anything body of the message, it can only return nil. But if we make it return the empty string, we actually get a pass. And there's our first passing test. So on to more normal things. Right, so here's our test. We want when we when we do two Roman on number one, we expect to get back an I. Um, and of course we can't get back in I because the only thing we're returning right now is the empty string. Um, and that's what it's telling us. Um, so before before I before I jump in and solve this, um, really quickly, as you're building up a solution to a problem like this, we had a green test, right? We know it solves the case when we when we pass in zero. So we don't want to lose that functionality. We want to retain the ability to still have the zero case work while we figure out how we're gonna solve the case for one. So what we wanna do is we want to guard against the zero case still passing. So here's some fun Ruby for you. Um, because we're dealing with the actual class that produces numbers for us, the value of the number that we're working with at any point in time is self, right? Because it is the number. 
right? So in this case, self is zero. And we're asking self, hey, are you zero? Because Ruby gives us a thing to, to ask if something's zero. Um, and so uh, by putting in this guard, we changed our terms. Look, now we've got expected i and got nil. Well, that was kind of like when we expected empty string and got nil. But we don't have a song, then we just made this return i, and now we're passing again. OK. So here's sort of the, the big leap of logic here. Um, it turns out that even though you would think the next logical number to convert is 2, turns out that that's not actually the best case, right? Um, because the return for 2 is actually a complex thing. And I'll get to why in a minute. Okay. However, if we instead jump forward to 5, and we get the error message we expect, and we put in our guard clause. Expected V, but got no. And we get the V, and now we're passing again. Okay. Um, so uh, before I move on with more solutions, um, these two cases are almost nearly identical, um, and there's a lot of extra sort of boilerplate stuff here that I don't really need. So I want to take a minute to um, refactor my tests and make them a little bit tighter. Um, I'm not going to go too crazy with it and like create like a thing that loops over stuff because I don't like doing that. Um, but there is a shorthand form of thank you of it right that works. So we can get rid of that and then we can copy paste this. Um, okay, well, that's a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to follow. So. We want to solve the two problem. And we expected two i's and got a v. Notice we're doing some pretty simple stuff. We get back to our nil. And then we return two i's and we get a pass. Okay. Let's rerun all the tests. Make sure we get four passes. There we go. Okay. So when I said that two is actually more complex than one, it kind of doesn't look like it right now because we did exactly the same thing that we did to solve for one and for five. But it turns out that two is actually two i. It's not one string with two characters. It's two strings that we're putting together and returning. So we're actually returning the value for one twice. Right? So we're not actually returning two. We're returning two ones. Well, that's actually the same as doing that. Everybody follow that? Mm -hmm. Right? Because we already know that one dot two Roman you get this back off. Okay? Well, it turns out that it's also the same as doing this. Everybody follow that? Okay, so what's happening here is if it's just one, if it's just i, if it's just one, we get back i. If it's two, we get back the first i, and then we take two minus one because we took one off the two to get this first i here, and we're returning that result whatever that result is. And it turns out that gives us two. Okay? Um, well, it turns out this is actually the meat of the entire routine of what we need to do to convert just about any Roman numeral. Right? However, we still have some issues here because we've got some special cases. So the first thing that we can notice is if we comment out the original guard clause for one, While we destroy things. 
Um, our routine now handles that guard clause, right? So we don't actually need it. That lets us clean up some of the duplication. We don't actually need it. We can get rid of it. Um, and it'd be great if we could do the same thing for this one here, because it was just a version of the thing we just got rid of. Everybody with me on that, conceptually? OK. Well, we can get there. But part of the issue we've got here is we've got some hard-coded info here, and we need to make this thing behave better than just hard-coded. And what we've got is we have a situation where we have numbers, and we have their symbol representation, or the glyph, right? And in our current case, that's actually equal to this. Replace this with number. And that with glyph, right? That still passes. Everybody with me? Right? We just substitute in for the one and the i into variables, and now we're using the variables in the calculation. Okay? So, what we want to do is we want to expand the reach of the variables to both encompass the one and the i, but also the five and the b. Okay? Well, we can do that if. Right? If we make it an array, right, now we have the, the opportunity to get one or the other of them depending on which one we want. Well, to figure out which one we want, we want to do this. Everybody sort of stay with me. show you that works, okay? But I'm going to talk you through what's happening here, okay? So a number comes in, and that number is self. And what we want to do is we want to find which symbol is most appropriate for starting or performing the conversion on whatever self currently is. So if self is one, we want to find the, we want to find this pair, right? But we also want to find that pair if self is two. Okay, so the number from the pair that we care about is the number that is either less than or equal to the current the current value for self. Everybody with me? This is this is, can be a little challenging to, to to get a handle on, but but this is the actual behavior. And if we comment out now that we can see that it's still working. Right, and now we can get down to this. And now this is in fact actually the algorithm that solves converting Arabic to Roman numeral. Right? Because all we have to do is figure out what are the pairs we need and expand this list. Okay? But we're actually not done. And we're not done because now this method, which started out as a couple of simple guard clauses and returning known constants, is suddenly now doing a whole bunch of work. And it's actually kind of doing too much work. It's concerned with figuring out which glyph to, which glyph to put in and, and, and uh, how to call itself again to get the next set of glyphs. But it's also making all of the glyph determinations and stuff. Right? So what we want to do is we actually want to give this process that I have highlighted here a name. Because it's actually a subpart of what this is doing. Right? And so this is a refactoring, and many of you have heard me talk about this before. We're going to perform an effect, a refactoring that's called extract method. Okay? Because this is a method here, and we're going to call it. Exactly. Oh, that's not going to work because 
well, it does work, but it shouldn't work because self is kind of not what we want. We want, it, we want the actual value that our paths are made. And then we can kind of take things one step further and make the list of pairs its own thing. example of taking uh, 3,497 and letting this convert that into the Roman numerals once I've built out all of the all of the pieces. I would have been impressed with Super Bowl 43. But right. <laughs> I've still got enough time. If people have questions, start thinking about the questions you might have. I would be happy to answer them. Hey, what's going on? Set this on 25 or 30. No, I'm, 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 I'm working, uh, working with it like it's set 25. Can you just wait? Nope. Hey Brian, yep. do you mind me going over again what the underscore is on line 18? Oh, sorry, I meant to cover that and I didn't mean to leave that out. I can make this a single line now. So, find lets us um, look into our array elements and it sort of loops over each one and compares the returned element with our condition. This is our condition, right? Well, our elements are paired. But the only part of the pair that I care about for the comparison is the first, is the left side of the pair in this instance. So I'm telling by using this underscore, I'm saying throw that away for the purposes of this comparison because I don't need it. Only give me the number because that's the only one I'm comparing. So that's what the underscore is doing. It's, it's, it's a placeholder for the other value in the subarray that I don't currently care about. By convention. It's yes. It's, it's, it's both for a bit of clarity and also for um, uh, it's ultimately saving me a step when I build the other side and recognize that the actual functionality needs to be extracted into a module that gets included into both of the core classes, right? So it's, it's, it's a little bit of premature, uh, premature optimization, but... Uh, um, it, it also helps to sort of clear up what we're doing here. We're saying we're on whatever self currently is and we want the pair for self, so rather than just sort of inferring the fact that we can grab it and that it maintains correctly through the recursive stack. I didn't want to get into that conversation. So. It's kind of like your referential transparency is better. You can make that case. Um, I'm not necessarily certain that I would, but you can make that case. That's not me, that's the Romans. <laughs> Is there a simple way to extend the procedure so that it handles the cases where uh, it's like one less than a number? Or do you have to actually it's, manually? It's already happened. Yeah. It, it, the, the, the logic actually does that for you. Right, the key thing is you have to make sure you're putting in the, the, oops, sorry, the right symbols. 
Um, and if you'll notice, this thing is giving us what it thinks the calculation should be, even though we don't have the right symbol. Thing. It's a great solution for Roman numerals because Roman numerals don't go above 4,000. Actually, 3,999. Okay. Um, so they didn't calculate modeling those? No. They didn't really have fractions. But in general, in your code, do you like this method of this, this recursive? I like the solution for for this particular, um, I like this solution in this case. Um, I don't always reach for the recursion naturally. Um, but when I came across the solution, I liked the way it felt for this. Mm -hmm. um, so here, let's rerun all the tests real quick. And then, <laughs> I, 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 happen, I happen to know what the conversion is for, for one big number, so let's do the one that I know. but why do you single quote some things and double quote the others? Uh, kind of a cuts. Okay. Um, and if I'm not thinking, my muscle memory will double quote everything. Um, and I think it's because I started with this double quote here. Yeah. That all the rest of the strings outputted were just double quoted. You mean the one above it? You had to use yeah, the one above it. You yeah. had to use double quotes there. Well, this is the this is the thing I had in mind. I didn't originally have all of this. I, I started out with just this, with just the short form, because I knew that's what I was going to go to. I wanted to show at least a little bit of the refactoring on the side of the test. There you go. There's the Roman numeral. Uh, 